Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. Lord Danilo is back, Spider-Man is back and into back to winning ways. It's that black kit again, as uh, Benjamin Bolivar says, it's the black kid that black is at the moment undefeated. I mean, if you're superstitious, um, maybe we need to keep this black kit until we uh, we don't win with this kit because it's giving us good luck. And um, San Danilo, San Danilo against Empoli. Remember that match that, you know, I'm not going to get into that match, but that match against Empoli, you know, a few years ago where Danilo put his body on the line as he usually does and made that goal line save. Today, once again, Danilo put his body, put his balls, put his kids on the line, loins on the line once again and saved Inter in the first half when it was nil-nil. And then went on the other end to score the first goal combining with Sanchez. Like this guy is just... Him, his headers, his his movement, and especially his his you know he's got these clutch moments that we just you just can't buy in football. You, only few players really have that. Um, you know, as a player, I'm not the biggest fan of him. You know, technically speaking, and all the kind of that, and especially now, um, you know, I don't think he he has that pace anymore. Of course, with his advancing age, but this guy he does he does deserve more playing time, and we we can see if whether he you know will get his new contract, but he does deserve. A new contract i think especially for the price that he you know the wages that he earns is cheap you know what he provides in terms of professionalism and he dedicated the goal to um to denzel dumfries actually um let me actually pull up the the picture where he runs to denzel dumfries on the bench uh, to the bench to to um you know denzel dumfries has received a lot of criticism from fans from you know critics and things like that and uh, yeah, here he is, you know, going straight to Dumfries. Great to see. And he's this. This is what he is. He's a he's a team player. You know, you can't you can't buy that. You can't buy that in football, can you? The uh, someone that cares about the team so much, he doesn't he doesn't put himself forward. You know, he could be moaning about not getting enough playing time. Um, he could have not signed the contract. His contract was expiring at the end of last season. Uh, so and then he renewed it. But well done to 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 to, to D'Ambrosio. I think. D'Ambrosio man of the match. Do you guys agree? D'Ambrosio or Di Marco? One of those two guys has to be has to be man of the match. Um, yeah, Benjamin, great game by D'Ambrosio. Blocked the shot that was heading to the goal and scored a goal. You know, two really key moments. Um, did VAR make it up for last Sunday by not bringing attention to D'Ambrosio's foul? Now, that's another good point. That was probably more of a penalty than maybe Alexandro, uh, you know, Dumfries on Alexandro, but and on the other end, I remember um, it was a Darmian. Darmian got kicked from underneath him, um, and then I didn't see that getting reviewed or something. I didn't. Well, I didn't really see the replay, but it looked like a potentially a penalty as well. But this is the thing, you know, when it's a big match, all these little things get looked at. But when it's, you know, an Empoli match or a Salernitana match, no one really cares. So that's the, you know, that's the frustrating part about the VAR, about the consistency. But yeah, maybe we got away with one there because it did look like D'Ambrosio did the. Uh, Touch of Bayrami. Um, Goran says Sanchez should have stayed at the end. Another key player, Sanchez. You know, I chose him for the thumbnail for the for my match preview because you know I wanted this guy to start and he deserves to start. And today he showed why he deserves to start. What a player! Still, as I always say, he's still technically the best player in the in this Inter team when it comes to you know chance creation, through balls, passing, dribbling. Um, this guy is still the best in the Inter team. He just doesn't have that, you know, scoring touch anymore. That he used to have that explosiveness of a, you know, maybe a slightly longer distances. He gets he gets caught up pretty easily. Um, but Sanchez showing today one well, assist for that D'Ambrosio goal, that little click clip ball right into the space uh, for D'Ambrosio's head. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Spider Man needed probably need to get a Spider Man gif in there for um for the for the channel members. Future Hendrix in the house has a really entertaining match till the garbage time. Yeah, I mean, you know, Inter had the match secured. And um, yeah, I got my wish for a clean sheet. That was my match prediction. Actually, I've got two match predictions in a row correctly now. I predicted 1-1 uh, for the Juve match. And then I predicted 2-0 for this match today. So damn, I wish I would put actually money down for the, for once uh, again, these match predictions, right? Um, Sheriff in the house as well. Razor of Orient says, gotta love the Inter worldwide to Sharma. Yeah. You know the 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 link up in the inter community. You know, there's not many of us in the inter, you know, content creation world, but we try to link up as much as possible. Um, more rotation versus Udinese Correa to start. 
Yeah, I mean, as I said, these are the matches where we should be trying to rotate and trying to see who's who deserves to start, who needs to get more minutes. We saw today Sanchez deserves more minutes. We saw D'Ambrosio is ready to step in. No, there was no bad players. Even Gagliardini today, I wasn't happy when I saw Gagliardini in the starting lineup. I thought it was going to be Bessino or Vidal. And I guess that proves that Inzaghi, when they said, you know, a, a lot of papers were speculating that when Inzaghi was at Lazio, I remember Gagliardini used to be linked to them quite a bit. And I guess this um, this just proves it, doesn't it? That it's true that Inzaghi did want Gagliardini. Clearly, he likes Gagliardini, and uh, he was he was decent today. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slander Gagliardini. I know he's not that great, and he's definitely not one of my favorite players. But he did his job, especially off the ball. Should have scored, hit the post, and then tried to get a goal with his hand, the hand of God or the hand of Gags. Um, but yeah, he was he was decent. You know, you can't slander. There's no one. There's no flop of the match today. I think the only discussion is who was the man of the match. And for me, I'm leaning towards... Actually, I'm leaning towards more Di Marco because Di Marco was so involved, um, you know, in the first half and in the second half. He got his goal as well. So I'm leaning towards Di Marco, to be honest. Not giving Denzel a chance to redeem and recover mentally is bad management. Yeah, I was surprised, actually. I was surprised about that. Uh, you know, look at this deja vu. <laughs> long time, bro. Too long. Way too long between wins. My brother Anthony from Inter Worldwide, if you don't know, now you know, of course, uh, make sure you check him out. But what did you make of this comment? I, I kind of agree a little bit because I was expecting Denzel to get a few minutes just to, you know, mentally recover. And, you know, the Empoli left back today was a it was his first start. Parisi is a very young left back. So I feel like he's someone that, you know, you could definitely throw Dumfries against him and try to exploit him. What do you think of that? I think the style of play with Empoli running at our defence would have given Dumfries a bit of anxiety and maybe Inzaghi would have known that. That 4-3-3 uh, versus Terrorist FC, the way they're going to set up on Sunday is a little mm -hmm. bit different. So I think um, given how, how much work Darmian actually had to do in the first half making those defensive challenges, I think it's the right decision to start Darmian. By not bringing Dumfries on, you'd hope and you'd think that Inzaghi's probably gone up to Denzel and go, you're in there minute one on Sunday against Udinese. And he will be and he should be because Udinese are not going to come at him. This is your game, Denzel. This is your game against Udinese to go incognito <laughs> and just make sure that you get a flat 6.5 or higher on who scored. <laughs> <laughs> Double D with his head again. Yeah, man, this guy. And I saw a stat that apparently only he and Bonucci are the defenders that have scored at least one goal in the last seven seasons of Serie A. So he's up, he's up there in terms of consistency as well. He's, this guy's been doing it for a while since the since the banter era. Let's not forget. And actually, thinking of the banter era, uh, bro. At one point, we had D'Ambrosio on. Um, we had Vecino Gagliardini on. You know, Lautaro. You know, this is uh, still a lot of Spalletti's Inter is still still there. Handanovic, you know, De Vrij, A lot of it, uh, Spalletti's Inter is still right there. Spalletti's Inter has like resurfaced this season. <laughs> like all these players that have, it's giving me some really bad deja vu, but. Well, at the same time, it was it's quite nostalgic and nice to get those wins. Like seeing those players smile, it just makes mm. you smile, bro. And I, I really, really hope that they they still feel as though they have such a purpose to give because that's what Conte and Oriali and Co made every single member of this squad believe for the last two years. Every single one of you is just as important as the eight assisting Hakimi or the twenty seven goal Lukaku. Everyone's just as important as each other. And I know that our players and our leaders in the dressing room are doing everything that they possibly can to keep mm. that stigma going because we do yeah. have leaders zeal man this is not a weak team mentally anymore where it was weak when it started out these Handanovic's, Perisic's, all the players i mentioned on my channel you know your um your rotational dons of the club your galliadini's yeah. darmian's d'ambrosio's uh barella bastoni perisic scrinia devray it's a team of goddamn leaders it really yeah, really yeah. is Definitely, bro. And uh, what did you make of, uh, you know, Keston here says Sanchez man of the match. Would you disagree with that? Would you still go with D'Ambrosio? It would have to be D'Ambrosio or, or Sanchez for me. Um, like you said on my channel, it wasn't like champagne football, but he did what he needed to do. He kept the ball mm. nice and tight. I still think he needs to release that ball a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, there was a couple of moments in the first half where he was like right on the edge of our box and he lost it twice from like a, a corner and they, they got actually a chance for that. That's one of the things with Sanchez. Yeah, he's a little bit... Yeah, risky in the moments a little bit um i thought brozovic once again wasn't 100 percent switched on today with some of his decision making what do you think this contract thing is starting to get into the to the danger zone into the red zone 
Yeah, yeah. I, I went on a channel yesterday, a Man United channel. He asked me to come and talk about, you know, Antonio Conte potentially coming. And I said, if he wants to play a 3 5 2, you know, Man United don't have a register. This guy's contract is expiring. This year, you know, in January, he can talk, he can legally talk to anyone that he wants. So, yeah, it's, it's starting to get into that danger zone. But I don't think that affected his performance as of yet. But I think soon it will start to do it if it's not sorted out. We've got to sort it out, man, because he's still a player that's going to fetch minimum 25 million. So yeah. sort the shit out and make sure we pocket some money. Like, I'm not 100% against him being sold after we renew the contract because mm -hmm. I feel like if we're going to sell any of the midfielders, it might be the one, and I might come to regret that. Let's just hope Bet there has his... Uh, technical goggles on and can replace a player like him man for man. I don't want to talk about him leaving yet. It's just that this sort of contract for a player like Brozovic, who's been at the club this long and seen mm. even more adversity in the club that's going on now, that leads me to believe that he's in no hurry to renew, man. And, and why not? He's at that point, as you just said, in his career where he can look at the Mercato and go, fuck, man, anyone's going to pick me up. I'll get three offers from every country. I'll get three offers from England, two from Germany, two from Spain, one from France. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's definitely not going to be short of offers uh, at, at that at that stage as well. Um, yeah, Sanchez getting a lot of love in the uh, in the in the comment section. Um, yeah, we were able to. I really like the fact that we rotated at the back at the at the end. You know, we were playing with Kolarov uh, and um, you know Bastoni, and uh, who else was playing at the back? D'Ambrosio. Did he stay the whole match, D'Ambrosio? Yeah, D'Ambrosio. I think he's um, stayed on the whole game. Yeah, so that was great that we were able to completely. Um, you know, change the team up. Oh, we've got actually someone coming from the Man United channel from yesterday. Appreciate you. Um, respect for you as well, Aiden. Um, Anthony actually here. He's also a guy who likes to follow Man United as well. So make sure you check Anthony's channel. Did you out. go on? Did you go on Statman Baines's channel? I watch him a fair bit actually. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I went on his channel. Oh, awesome, bro! I gotta check that out. Mad respect. Good stuff, man. Tap into those Man United fan channels, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, if Conte goes to Man United, I'm going. I'm joining United Twitter. I'm going on the, you know, <laughs> bro, bro. You know, you know me, bro. I've got a little bit of a little bit of uh, Man United stuff hanging up in another room in this alter ego. That I've <laughs> I know never you had the balls to admit on camera, man. It's too <laughs> sneaky. Uh, the end of Inter World Wide, it would be. Let me have a quick look at the stats. Um, obviously, today they're going to be a little bit skewed because obviously the red card in the 52nd minute, actually, yeah, it's quite early on. I, I thought it was a little bit later than that. But yeah, they pretty much played half an hour without a man. So yeah, 70% possession for Inter, which is the most we've had this season. 21 shots, nine on target, complete um, complete domination. And yeah, the table looks slightly better now. Um, you know, it, the 10 points looked a little bit too much. Napoli, of course, tomorrow. They're playing Bologna, so I'm expecting them to go back to 28. Yeah. But at least keeping it to seven points, I think that's uh, that's uh, respectable for now. And then you can always try to claw back any points that they might start to start to drop. Nice to see Juventus still down there. Yeah. Um. What, yeah. What were you gonna say? I, don't know, I was just gonna agree. It's just really nice. <laughs> yeah. Empoli, nice and right in the mid table. I think. I think they're gonna stay up. Empoli. What do you think? They will definitely stay up. I really, really wanted to see Roma drop some points this morning. But at mm. the same time, you know, Cagliari getting relegated is something I've sort of been vouching for for the last few years. And I think that they're <laughs> on their I think that they're on their way down. Um it would have Surely. been better if they went it would have been better if they went down with Raja there, but yeah. <laughs> that was your wish. That was your one it wish. It was. It was my wish to see him if you didn't, register, if you even didn't if you never played a game. Them. I just I just wanted to see him registered in Serie B and just screenshot it and like could probably go somewhere on my wall. <laughs> that would have been your scudetto if we didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. Who scored uh, let's see who they gave the man of the match. Yeah, it looks like they gave it to D'Ambrosio with an eight point two. Um Sanchez got a 7.9. Martinez got a 7.9. That's surprising. Yeah, let's talk about um, Lautaro. I've seen a few comments. People are saying, well, I won't be able to find it now because, uh, you know, at the moment I want to find it. I won't be able to find it. But um, a few people have mentioned that they're potentially worried about Lautaro. What did you make? We, we messaged personally as well at the, in the middle of the match. I thought you were talking about Lautaro, right? Yeah, yeah, Toro. I think, like... As I just mentioned on my channel before, no matter how many goals this guy scores this season, I just feel like he will excel in a team that can play with more men wide of him. More, he's just he's being asked to do a little bit more than I actually think he's physically capable of doing. Zio, I think he's really trying to play in between that Lautaro, La Lukaku mold, and he just looks void of strength. Um, mm. He looks void of being able to beat a man. 
I love Toro. And when he does leave, which I'm sure he will in the next couple of years, to be honest, I really do think he will. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see him play in a different light somewhere else. I think he's really giving his all. He likes this club. He loves this club, to be honest. But Inter is still a club that's going to look to cash in on assets soon, whether we want to admit it or not. And right now, if an offer of anywhere for 60 plus came in for Lautaro, I really don't think we'll think twice about it. Yeah, no. Uh, it seems like those reports were true that we rejected the offer from, from Spurs and Arsenal because I, I didn't believe that initially, but apparently it was true that there was actual there was an actual offer for for Lautaro there. But you know, but his what he offered today in terms of the second half, he had a, he had a stinker of a first half and he probably should have scored as well today. But that assist to Di Marco was nice. That front play, um, that was really nice play. This is more what I want to see from Lautaro. Like even if he doesn't score. He needs to add, start adding more assists to his game. You know how Lukaku was doing last year. Um, even if he's not scoring, at least offering some sort of chance creation because he's always the one hogging the shots and hogging the, you know, end product. But I would like him to like him to see to do more of this kind of stuff. What, do you think yeah, he's got it in him? That was his crowning moment of the match. That was his redemption moment of the match. That assist mm -hmm. right there, and it, it was really, really good. So I was happy for him when he got that. Yeah. Tommy says Lautaro needs to be dropped. Um, I mean, at the moment, I wouldn't be against, like oh, I've said, I want to see a sanchez Jekko. I feel like a sanchez Jekko partnership could be could be interesting to see from the beginning. I wouldn't be against that in the next match against Udinese to start off with uh, Sanchez and, um, oh, Anthony will be back in a minute. But yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't be against putting um, Sanchez and uh, Jekko from the beginning. What do you guys think? Uh, I think? I think that could be an interesting partnership. Uh, Lautaro is becoming more like Perisic, mess up some moments, but still getting some goals and assists. Yeah, I mean, he's always been a little bit like that, hasn't he? Like, he's inconsistent within a match. Like, he'll go, you know, 40, 50 minutes without doing something sometimes, but then, you know, wake up all of a sudden, have an amazing volley. But one thing, though, even today, like, you can never fault Lautaro for his effort. He was pressing, he won the ball back two or three times. Um, yeah, you know, all of our strikers are asked to press, but his, his pressing is more intense than the other strikers and that's for sure i've always said that i think that's why lautaro i feel like he's not that clinical in front of goal either because he's just out of breath by the time he gets to gets to shoot i would love to see a korea jacko combo one game yeah i think we need i think we should rotate our strike partnership to see you know could could the could korea jacko work Could sanchez jacko work could Correa and Sanchez, you know, two false nines together. Maybe that even works. Like I would like, because we've got so many options up front. I would like to see that um, rotation. But that's always, you know, there's always a caveat. Are they fit? You know, it looks like Correa now is fit. But now, once again, the international break is going to come in another, what, two weeks. And I can just imagine him going off to Argentina once again and getting injured again. Yeah. Um, how, many minutes, how many minutes did Correa get today? He got like 10 minutes, right? I think more like 20 minutes. I think he came on at like the 70th minute. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what do you think, Anthony? Do you think we'll buy someone to sell someone in the transfer window? I've been saying it will be potentially a loan. It will be like, you know, the 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 uh, the Nahita Nandez. I saw he didn't start today. Uh, someone like that. Or, you know, maybe a striker. Uh, or maybe, you know, another midfielder. If he is the Van der Beek, I don't see any us any buying anyone. What do you think? I think it'll be Nandez and that's it. I don't see anybody else coming in. I think I think we, we could go in for a striker, but I'm just thinking about who. I don't, I'm not too sure. Like if we can come in with an offer, like a really low offer for Belotti, who didn't mm -hmm. start again for Torino. I don't know if he's injured, but he hasn't been seeing the field as often as he usually would this season. If we can come in with an offer of 15 M's, anything under 20 uh, for Belotti, um, for a few years, I wouldn't mind it because I actually think in terms of the relative strength in Serie A at the moment, he's still one of the better finishers and one of the better forwards. And I think any sort of advantage that you can get over your rivals at the moment, even those little advantages pay dividends in the end. If Belotti is going to give you 10 to 12 to 15 goals a season, that's something that you want. And, you know, Jekyll has been doing his job well this season, but is Jekyll going to continue this all season and into next season? That's a big if. That's a huge if. Let's make sure that we're not getting to the point where we look so desperate at the end of the season that mar that values go up. Because at the end of the day, if you show your weaknesses and your flaws, that obviously other directors, if they're freaking good at their job, they'll notice that, man. They'll notice that. And the inflation starts. And the inflation is very real. Exactly. Exactly. 
And guys, yeah, I don't want to. You already have said this in the past that like it's too early to start calling people flops. Like even you know Dumfries and Korea, like we're we're in October, guys. You know, you can start saying these things. You know, January, February, you can start saying like you know these guys have had six months and whatever. But no one's a flop right now. Yes, you can say that you know Korea's not lived up to the price tag for sure, but that's mainly due to injuries. You know, so let's give the guy at least some injury free time and let's give Dumfries some time to adapt. Let's not jump on these guys as backs um yeah and of course marotta being at the club you can always stay calm and safe but at the same time indro all those names you mentioned there they cost money so if we sell lautaro how much of that money is going to be reinvested whilst sooning is still there that's the issue it's not just um just to interrupt bro this whole mm -hmm. conte to united thing do you think it could actually happen yeah yeah i think it could happen i don't think i don't see him being the glazer's choice though because you know, we know what the Glazers, they don't want someone who's going to challenge them, that's going to demand things. They want a yes man like Ole, um, you know, like think, the David Moyes. Those are the type of guys. They, Mourinho was, you know, already quite a big decision for them. And yeah, I don't feel like they might go around that route. But I think he's the right choice. Like if, if I'm the Man United sporting director, I go, I put all my money into Antonio Conte and give him whatever he wants. Bro, I reckon Conte is taking one look at that squad and lineup and licking his lips going, the shit I can do with this group of players is already good. And the thing is with United, United don't have F off money, but they've still got money at the moment. Like they'll, they'll have no problem giving Conte 100 to 150 M's in his first year. That's not detrimental to Manchester United. And that on top of what they've got already, I reckon Conte would whip them into shape. I reckon he'd be the one to bench Ronaldo and tell him to go and get stuff, to be honest, man. But I'd just love to see it for the carnage and the circus that it would be. Yeah, look, that's what I mean, bro. Like, I want to see Conte and Ronaldo working together. Like, I want to see, like, Conte tell it, shouting at Ronaldo to, like, sprint back or something like that. That would be the yeah. funniest <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, Schaubert, Luke Schauberto, Carlos telling Ronaldo to get back. <laughs> um, but uh, what, let me quickly go back to the player ratings before we, uh, we finish, Anthony. I want to just talk about everyone else. So, obviously, we talked about D'Ambrosio. Uh, Sanchez being kind of standout players as I said Di Marco I was really impressed with him today um, you know he didn't really suffer too much defensively and uh, going forward he was a threat you know he, he had a few nice shots as well like what did you make with Di Marco? I, I've enjoyed his play today I, I don't think he hugged the, bar, the, the sideline as often as he usually did he really did start to drift in a little bit more and take on the ball and hold the ball and make sure some other players came up with him as well so he was definitely one of the safer players and just he's even not all his crosses are fantastic, but he's the best crosser we've had in a long, long time. And he can really yeah. hit the ball well on target, man. He's very, very good with his delivery. And I mm -hmm. think with a little bit more space, he's going to do a lot more this season, man. So I know there's a couple of people that are critical of him, but, you know, give the guy some time. He's, he's spent the last few years out on loan at mid-table clubs. And here he is just trying to level up and he's on the score sheet today again. Yeah, and he had four key passes, the most in the match. Um, yeah, and today I saw an interview of him. He says, you know, he's an Interista from since he was born. He used to go to the Curva. He, you know, he's happy that he's finally back, you know, permanently in Milan as well. So, you know, we always want to say that we want to see the Primavera guys in the in the team. And this is finally someone who's made it. So let's give the guy, you know, a chance. I know Chris, Christian Rivas is not the biggest fan of him. <laughs> or Mario, yeah. Or oh, Bruno, really? to be honest, no, all, all of them. Uh, they, they they don't they don't necessarily think that he's up to caliber. He's up to par. But you know, we've all said things and we've all looked stupid <laughs> in the past. <laughs> oh well, Kolarov apparently completed the dribble, so that's good. To, <laughs> that's good to see that his uh, legs are even good for that. Remember, um, remember la at the end of last season where the Intermedia House came out with the the IM compilations for every player yeah, on yeah, YouTube, yeah. and Kolarov's one was like fifty seven seconds. <laughs> 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 it was him getting, him getting the, um, Ibrahimovic red carded <laughs> yeah 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 that was about 36 seconds of it <laughs> look at this Gagliardini but most tackles in the match bro doubling he, yeah more than double the next best. he had a presence today bro who was dribbled the most oh Di Marco was dribbled the most uh, yeah that, we, that's the thing about him you know defensively um, successful tackles yeah Gagliardini interceptions Darmian for us so, who was the most dispossessed? Uh, Di Marco. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> I'm having to eat my word now. <laughs> but no, overall, he, he was good. He was good, Di Marco. I was impressed. Um, anyone else that you were particularly impressed with? Um, uh, Bastoni, honestly, I think Bastoni made a step up compared to the last few matches. 
I think that all of our players that had to contribute defensively today did quite well. Um, maybe Bar Di Marco looking at those stats now, but I didn't really realize it at the time. But I, did, I think we were covered very well today, man. We were covered very well. Bastoni did his job today. D'Ambrosio and Darmian, they, they've got great communication. They could interchange. You wouldn't even know which one is playing um, right center back and right wing back half the time, to be honest. So I think everybody on the defensive end did well today. To keep a clean sheet is just not easy. You're rarely seeing sides do it in the league at the moment. Um, and yeah, same, same as Kenston. Um, I've got a dip as well, but Chama, it's, it's just so good to get three points, man. My whole body language is so relaxed today. Bro. Hey, now you're gonna, you're gonna go through your work day with a nice smile on your face. That's it, man. People are gonna think what's up with this guy. Why is he so happy? <laughs> We're in a t-shirt upside down. I'm gonna leave it on too. <laughs> Thanks brother. Thanks to all the people that tuned in this morning for uncle Sharma and myself. Three points, terrorist FC on the weekend, bro. Yeah, bro. We'll uh, we'll see how we go do there. But thank you for coming on. And make sure you check out Inter Worldwide, guys. Peace, guys. Forza Inter. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, I'll be on just for a few more minutes, guys. So let's uh, get your um, commenting in terms of what about the Udinese match. Obviously, we'll get into the Udinese match properly. But is there anyone that you want to see starting in the in the Udinese and the Empoli game? How did you guys feel like? Um, how did you guys feel like Pinamonti did? Um, I felt like, you know, Ricci, because I said he was one of the one guys to watch. And I feel like he, he was pretty he was pretty good until the red card. And he's definitely a guy I would keep my eye out on as a potential Brozovic backup in that position. Because, you know, we're going to have to change our project now. We're going to have to go back to kind of the CNC type of signings, you know, cheaper, younger Italian guys. That's the type of um, signings that we have to go back to in terms of... Uh, now that we have a much less of a budget, so Rich is definitely one guy to watch out for. And obviously today's that tackle, the red card was a inexperience. Um, how did I get into Inter? I um, I grew up in Italy, and the original Ronaldo R nine, the best Ronaldo, the goat. He's how I got into Inter. Um, Khalid is still optimistic about Mission Second Star. Yeah, man, we gotta be optimistic, but you know we have to the other teams need to start dropping some points now you know i'm sure they will but it's starting to get to that point where you know yesterday in, in milan against torino like they, they they keep eking out these results even though they're not playing particularly well at the moment um we'll see julian says he wants to see more rotations for the match in udinese yeah but the thing is with the udinese match if i'm not mistaken is that the last match before the international break uh oh no we got a sheriff as well before the international break um so yeah it probably makes sense to keep rotating for a little bit uh so yeah we've got udinese on the 31st and um we've got sheriff on the third oh no so milan the milan derbies before yeah so it, i think it does make sense yeah to rotate still a little bit for the udinese match and then you go full strength for um, the sheriff match, and you go full strength for the um, the Milan derby for sure. So yeah, I agree. I do want to see that Brozo renewal soon. Yeah, we hope, we hope, but we'll see. Um, he spoke about it last week, and he said, you know, it depends on it depends on Inter. Um, and apparently, he's asking for around six. Inter offering around five. So hopefully, they're able to find kind of a middle ground. Uh, we need to start thinking of next week. The team will play in Moldova on Wednesday, and yeah, and the derby on Sunday. So. Players like, yeah, Barella today, I think that was on the substitution. Someone mentioned that, you know, should he should he have been probably, I probably should have been one of the guys subbed off. I know he does fine in that, you know, Brozovic role when Brozovic goes off, but, you know, he just looks tired, like in his face, like he's got like bags under his eyes, the poor guy. Uh, this year, attackers assist ball for mids slash wingers, the Liverpool football, agree. Um I don't know. I don't know about Liverpool football because you know Liverpool's football is very much you know based on their the the wingers, um, you know Salah and Mane, and the striker doesn't really you know, I don't know. And the fullbacks are very much well. I guess you could say in some way, but I wouldn't compare it to Liverpool football in any way. Uh, Benjamin, yeah, Vidal should be fit for Udinese because he's on the bench today, so he should be back for the Udinese match. So uh, yeah, I would like to see uh, Vidal back for that. Rotate the Vrij, Barella, or Brozo. Yeah, so today. You know, we rotated Skriniar, so the next match you could start Skriniar and rotate the Vrij, so put Ranocchia in. And Udinese actually have a tall striker called Beto, who's like six foot three, six foot four. So probably Ranocchia could be the good matchup for him. Um, that's the issue with the Brozo and Barella is the one that we just can't seem. I don't think Inzaghi has the confidence for anyone to replace them properly. That's really the um, that's really the issue. 
ideally, yes, they should be rotated, but it doesn't seem like, you know, Brozovic was subbed off today. So that's probably, you know, the excuse to start Brozovic as usual. Um, and then maybe sub off Borella earlier in the Udinese match. I think that's how Inzaghi is going to do it. Um, the old <laughs> reboot, I said the, the Sensi hype train is only seeing me. I'm only buying the ticket for that hype train when he's putting in five matches in a row, at least without getting injured. Then I'll start again on the Sensi hype train. But once again, he did look nice today. Some nice touches, even scored. He was offside, but you guys know how much I like him, but I'm not going to give him any respect until um, this guy, you know, puts in a few matches in a row. Christian Vargas, you know, is my guy. Yeah, we were praising you. You know, you were hyping Sanchez and D'Ambrosio and your two guys came through. Since you start along with Correa, yeah, but the problem with Sensi is, you know, you can't rely on him. Like he started against Sampdori and this guy came on and got injured. Like you can't, he's not reliable. I, I agree that maybe he should start, but again, I think he needs to go through a period of like a month or two months without getting injured. And then, then he can start to actually start. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to see, you know, these, especially Korea. I know people are getting on Korea's back, but I, there must be a reason why Inzaghi wanted this guy so bad. He was the one player that Inzaghi asked for. He's our most expensive player this summer so there must be a reason and give him some time guys give him some time let's not jump on Korea's back already since he loves to tease us man he is a tease he's a you know he's a he gets the pre-com going he gets the 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 juice is flowing for sure um have you noticed the team plays calm when the assistant manager coach yeah but I mean if you also if you notice even last season, when the assistant manager came in, it was like the lesser matches. I remember it was like the Benevento match, and this season, yeah, like the Empoli matches. You know, if if this happens, let's see, like you know, if this is the Milan derby or the Juventus match, and see how calm the team is. And obviously, the red card helped a lot in terms of the team playing calm. We weren't calm in the first half. We, you know, the Empoli did put us in trouble in the first half for sure. So is only me with Marco fixes bold spot. No, he's just he's got the shorter hair. And he's got the bleached color, so it kind of blends it in. It's just like when he's got the longer hair, it's more noticeable right here, isn't it? So um, I don't think he's had the time to go to, you know, Turkey to get his, uh, his his hair done yet or go to the Conte hair clinic wherever he went to get his hair done yet. I think you need a few you, you need a few weeks if you go to get one of those hair treatments because you have to have the treatment takes a few weeks and you have to, I think you have to keep like some sort of, um, cap or something on for a, for a while from from what i understand anyway um beppe said zang is saying but well, we can't know trust the word from zang's mouth would it make sense for them keeping the club yeah the word coming out is um yeah that zang wants to keep the club for a while still but we'll see these are kind of things obviously he, he's not going to say that he wants to sell inter at the moment because that would just reduce the 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 price of the of the of the club um sky punjab always on point of course um but yeah, guys, I'm really happy today, man. See the three points, clean sheet. You know, you guys know I'm a big fan of clean sheets, especially this season. Uh, we need to improve our, you know, our defensive record going into the Udinese match. Udinese preview should be out probably, you know, playing Sunday, so Saturday, Saturday morning, I'm thinking of doing the preview. So keep a lookout for that. And actually, speaking of, you know, tactics and stuff, me and Mo, uh, Tactical Mo, you know, the guy that does videos on, into worldwide he's been on my channel as well we're thinking of doing a video to compare Conte's Inter and Inzaghi's Inter you know using screenshots using you know some tactical moments between matches and comparing the differences showing the heat maps you know kind of like a little deep dive into the differences of the of the two of the two teams so yeah keep a lookout for that in the coming weeks uh for that video um and yeah thank you everyone that's tuned in today um I was, uh, yeah, that, this was the, the uh, D'Ambrosio is the man of the match, I have to say. It's just D'Ambrosio. Shouts out to DiMarco and Sanchez, as I said. Make sure you guys are leaving a thumbs up. It helps with the, you know, the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. And if you're interested in becoming a channel member, as some of the guys in here are, um, you, as I said, your Nick Knox is one of the uh, channel members. Um, as he says, yeah, if we beat Milan, you know, that could be the turning point of the whole season where, you know, it slip flips it, you know, they're all confident now, they're unbeaten. But as soon as, you know, you get that win, that's the stumble. And that's the moment that we can take advantage and start, you know, climbing back again, maybe put a streak together. But yeah, um, 
yeah make sure you look out for that video have i ever been on nima's podcast yeah i've been on on the um studio inter podcast um i think last year i was on it once and um yeah i'll probably be on it again he invites me sometimes but the timings never quite match up with us but yeah thank you everyone that's tuned in make sure you leave a thumbs up if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe ciao ragazzi forza inter <laughs>